Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Damascus Gear, Operation Osaka. Didn't think I'd be playing this one again so soon. Uh, I only just did the video of the Japanese version of this one, like three weeks ago or something like that? And now this one's out. It just had a couple of trophy lists and then the first time it popped up in my inbox was with review code and an alert that it was out. Like literally out that day. So, yeah. A little odd. Never mind. Let's just go and hop straight into it, shall we? I do apologize for the echoey voice, but I'd rather have really cool air in here that would actually help me focus on this. So, this is the same sort of setup I had in the original game in my first video, but for the purpose of making things easy, this will be just, uh, okay, you haven't seen this game before, let's see what's up. No save timer, but I think I've been playing for around four hours. I've been watching a really good Let's Play of Prey, which is a, actually one of my favorite games of last year. And I just played this while that was going in front of me. And well, yeah, four or five hours sounds about right. So let's just boot it up. Now, there's going to be a bit of a story, quote unquote, cutscene coming up here, but it's not much of anything, really. You can just listen to the voice acting a little bit. あの時借金の返済が出来ひんかった場合はギアもろもろを差し押さえるって使いがあったんですそれを思い出してピンときましたもしかしてこのドックには結構価値があるんちゃうかなとそして期日直前に売れるもんはなるべく売ってみるんは
more points you put in, the more stuff out of all these you unlock. I'm going for a relatively even balance, just because it's fairly useful that way. You can go for a mech performance test, try out all your stuff, but we won't do that right away. You can also repaint your mech, so we can actually just redo the whole thing at once, and I think I will, just for the purpose of demonstration. Might as well turn it blue. And you can also change the name. His current name is Izumo, but I don't think that does anything. And here's your mech swap parts menu. You can equip parts to your five parts of your body up here. You've also got three different weapons. One for your right arm and one for your left arm, both of which share the same slot. So you can use the same gun both hands if you want to. And you've got a weapon that goes on the back. You can also set some particular sets of weapons and armor to, if you like that sort of thing. Now the thing is... This game does actually have some weird ways of working around attacks and stuff like that, and I know this quite well because I've been working fairly hard in order to make sure that I can actually, you know, understand the whole system a bit better because I was still a little bit confused about all of it when I was doing my video on the Japanese version. While well, things have gotten a fair bit better, not massively, but a fair bit. So here's the drill. Certain colors of enemies are weak to certain kinds of weapons, and you've got two different kinds of weapons, your physical and your lasers. So you need to try and have a little bit of a balance between the two, because you can make it so that your physical attack, just as an example, is absolutely ridiculously high. And this is actually affected by both your weapons and the weapon on your back. So carrying along even one weapon will cut the weapons of your other two... Oh, carrying along one weapon of one type will weaken the other two no matter what, which is really annoying, actually. And, yeah, other than that, though, that's basically it. You do also have the hit stat, which is actually quite important, because if that gets too low, you're not going to be able to hit shit, and it's really annoying. Like, if I were to take long um, something that made my laser attack, my physical attack stronger, I wouldn't be able to touch anything, just because some of the enemies in this game will literally have, like, 90% dodge rates if your hit rate is too low, and it's fucking retarded. Nevertheless, away we go. So let's actually go and hop on a mission. The missions are really simple. You can pick a level of mission that you want to go on, although I've only got three. It's annoying. I wish I would have unlocked some more by now. And you can go and do whatever the damn hell you please. So you can investigate the floor 21, you can collect any material, and you can collect 20 Delphin parts. I'm guessing Delphin has to be uh, one of the brands of mechs. You can also play on rank D and rank E, but these will get you basically nothing, so there's no point. We might as well just go straight into the survey mission, and this will give us a little bit of money, but not too much. Alright, let's do this. The first floor is always a uh, Take a break and relax floor. We're just going to go straight to floor 10 because I can one-shot everything between floor 2 and 9. So there's really no point in sticking around on those earlier floors. So anyway, your controls are very simple. Left stick to move, L to lock on, circle and square to fire your main weapons, and triangle to fire the weapon on your back. And you also have the X button to dodge, although dodging in this game isn't particularly great. You can also use the R button as a booster. You can boost and evade as much as you want, but you can't fire your weapons while you're doing this. So it's recommended that you at least try and not be boosting around all the time. And you use the D-pad to change what med kit you have equipped and to use them, and that's pretty much it. It's a very simple control scheme. It's mainly meant for doing stuff along the lines of you know, making it so that the looting and the damaging is part of, is not even, not even part, the majority of what you need to worry about. So there's an escape gate, bu gate up ahead. These are the only way you can actually get out of the dungeon without paying like a million of the game's money, which is Ian or whatever, the, however the bloody hell you're supposed to pronounce Yen with the E and the Y reversed. But yeah, if you evacuate successfully, you can take out 20 parts and you get your rewards. And if you don't evacuate successfully, you don't get your mission rewards and you only get 5 parts. So, surprisingly annoying. But yeah, as you can see, I am just trying to beat the crap out of these dudes. And I seem to be doing alright. I'm in a relatively decent position right now where 
my mech appears to be capable of one-shotting pretty much everything, but the game's still got those absolutely horrid difficulty spikes that I went on, on out of it, that I went on about in my last video. So the game has this annoying tendency, like I'm on floor 13 right now, and this is a good example because this actually happened to me once. I went into a room like like this one. Yeah, I went into a room like this one where no one could touch me, and I was literally able to one-shot everybody. This is not a very uncommon room if you're in a state like I'm in at this point in the game. However, when I went to level 13 on this one faded time, I ran into a dude who took no damage and one-shotted me. And I'm not entirely sure what the deal was. I haven't seen it happen before and I don't think I'll see it happen again, knowing my luck. But yeah, they just come out of nowhere and they can just wipe the floor with you. They will just push your shit in sometimes. And I don't know why the difficulty on some of these levels is so ridiculously high. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And I can't figure out what the difference is on what you're meant to do. Because even with my intensely powerful, literally kills most enemies I've run into in one shot mech. I still somehow managed to get absolutely destroyed by whatever the hell is in these rooms. And it's surprisingly frustrating when you have a good run of like 20 to 30 legendary parts. Oh, Jesus. When you've got like 20 or 30 legendary parts. Trap deactivated, what? Okay, I'm just gonna. Oh. There's the issue. Right. You can't hit shit without locking on, by the way. The lock-on is very important. But as before, if you watched my previous video, the lock-on will only disengage after a certain distance. Well, will disengage, I should say, after a certain distance. And by after a certain distance, I mean basically like one screen length away without, you know, without having locked on to someone. So about there, if I get that far away, the enemies that are over in the corner right now will lose lock-on. So... Yeah, kind of a problem. But as I was saying before, it can be really frustrating when one of those sudden difficulty spikes just comes out of nowhere and just wrecks your day because you weren't prepared for something that you couldn't be prepared for. Where the game will just do a 100% turnaround from you being able to one-shot everything to everything being able to one-shot you within a snap of the fingers. And it can be the... Most frustrating thing I've played in a while. Let's launch the back weapon. It didn't really hold much, unfortunately. So this is why you want to maintain a good balance between a physical weapon and a laser weapon. Like, my laser weapon on these sorts of enemies does about double the damage, roughly, in comparison to physical weapons. And this is a thing that can swap without warning. The only warning you'll get that an enemy might be weak to whatever weapons you've got is that their color is different doesn't change, it's not like a roguelike where the uh, type of enemies will change between every level or every time you drop in, but they will change. And this of course results in just weird random difficulty spikes that make absolutely no sense. Sometimes you'll even run into these levels where they'll just be these indestructible dudes and they'll just be flying around and then there'll be this turret in the middle of the room that fires practically light speed laser bolts and the first time you run into a room with one of those indestructible laser bolt cannons you will die I guarantee you you will die at least once or at least now that you know about it you might know to avoid it but if you walked into one of those rooms and didn't have a clue you would die those things could one shot you I had 17,000 health and some pretty high defenses as in everything that tried to touch me on the levels beforehand, only did anything between 1 to 20 damage. This thing took off 15,000 health in one shot, and I was dead. So, yeah, the difficulty spikes in this game feel really unfair at times. Especially in an event that literally just happened in the story. I was fighting something... I was fighting in a what was basically a survival battle, where they were dropping in AI mechs, one after the other, right? The first five that came down... I shot immediately, and they died. One shot, one kill. Very easy. Then number six came in, 
dodged 90% of my hits, and two shot me. Not one shot, but two shot. I was dead. Gone. There was nothing I could have done. Maybe a little bit of more creative dodging might have helped me last a little bit longer, but I'd only managed to take out like 5% of his health at that point, and I was fucked. Like, there was, there was no... There are no better words for it other than I was literally fucked from the very beginning. As soon as I stepped into the room, I was not going to leave it a lot. Well, not so much as soon as I stepped into the room because it was something I had to do. And it was an arena challenge. But as soon as I had gone into that battle, I wasn't coming out of it. It was that bad. I don't know why the game insists on doing this, but it does. And it makes absolutely no sense. And it's nowhere near as satisfying as other games like this I've played because... Having random spikes on the curve like that just really takes me out of it, and I'm surprisingly frustrated by it. I said in my previous video that I was worried that might be because I was just not understanding the game because it was in Japanese, and I might have had something important to tell me. But I read through all of the things they had for me in the... Well, well I don't remember exactly what they call it, uh, but they call I think it was the report screen? where you can read up on both the history of the world and some basic gameplay tips, and I read through them and I didn't seem to be missing anything important, so I don't know where these random... I don't know where these random as hell difficulty spikes are coming from, but they're coming from somewhere, they come from out of nowhere, and they just absolutely wipe the floor with you. That's my biggest problem with this game. I've already listed a couple of others, like how your lock-on isn't long-range enough, and the... And the game's performance does tend to drop from time to time. But yeah, the game's biggest problem by far is the fact that it just feels the need to screw you with random difficulty spikes. That's the biggest problem it's got. If it fixed that, I would have been able to recommend it, just because... Well, outside of those difficulty spikes, it's a pretty good idle game. And I don't mean idle game in the sense of, like, idle RPG or maybe something like Clicker Heroes. Idle in the sense that you do it while you're doing something else and you feel like you should be doing something else because whatever it is isn't engaging you completely. Something along the lines of, like, watching a video on YouTube, which is what I was using this game to do. And... That is just a little bit disappointing that I can't outright recommend it because of just the overwhelming difficulty for no discernible reason other than ha ha fuck you. And as I did say, the game's performance can drop a little bit. It's not that bad right now, but there are later levels where they'll put like 12 mechs in the same room as you, and they'll all start shooting as soon as you cross the barrier, which is those little green barriers there, because they all just spawn out of nowhere. You can see how they just shoot me immediately as soon as I come into view, which Really doesn't seem that fair, because there are some missions in this game where you have to get down to a certain level without using a med kit, and it's almost impossible. But, yeah, it's just it's just weird. Like, I don't know why they choose to do half the things they do in relation to this game's difficulty, and it just drives me mad. I don't remember the original Damascus gear being anywhere near this bad in terms of the difficulty curve. Like, I, I've been, I wanted to play this game for as long as possible, just so I could see what the bloody hell was going on. Like, with the, with the difficulty curve and stuff like that. So, I played for a bit, I got my stats as high as I possibly could. I did a full-on, like, um, the game recommends you get, like, a full-on armor set that belongs to a certain company. Like, you get certain sets of armor from certain mechs that will give you ever so certain stats, and if you combine all the same suit together, it'll actually give you a stat bonus. I got all of that. I got all of it at once. And I'm still coming across these really weird and really annoying difficulty spikes. There are some that have been, like, reasonable though, and by reasonable I mean in the story sense, because... The story does sometimes put you in situations you can't win, but it does give you things for, you know, not actually winning. It does this a couple of times, but... Those are reasonable because the game warns you about them beforehand in, like, the discussions and all that, right? Oh, fuck me. Yeah, this is the instant kill guy, if you couldn't tell. See how much damage I just took there? Yeah. 
Up to that point, I barely lost a quarter of my health bar in the one room. Like, she did warn me that, that this was a rage floor where the enemies can be a bit stronger. But that's ridiculous. She does warn you of what floors certain things are, but the layouts of most of these floors are not particularly engaging. It's more or less just a bunch of rooms connected by hallways. Sometimes there'll be traps, sometimes there'll be little spheres for you to hit that'll let you collect items. But it doesn't stop feeling particularly samey, which is a little bit disappointing. Because at least with um, games like Dragon's Crown, you've got a bunch of unique stages to work with. This game, everything starts to feel the same. When you start getting deeper, they start giving you slightly different backgrounds, but... Outside of that, it's just, it's just not particularly interesting. I could probably take the next escape gate out of here because I don't see a chance of getting much further than this. Investigate the floor... what? Oh, it's probably because I... It's probably because I skipped to floor 10. Annoyingly, they make you go all the way through. Yeah, 425. What was my other objective again? Uh, collect 20 dolphin parts, okay. Don't have anywhere near the amount of dolphin parts I need for that, which is annoying. It seems like some of those objectives are luck-based as well, like... It'll ask you to collect a certain amount of parts from a certain amount of enemies, and you'll go through every floor that you can get through, fight every troop you can, and you still won't find anywhere near enough to actually do the objective. I don't think I've been able to complete all three objectives in this survey area. Actually, no, that's a lie. I have once. I've managed to complete all three objectives they gave me for this kind of level once, and that was it. Other times, I've just had the bad luck to not be able to get all three objectives done in one run. There are, of course, different item rarities and different things you can pick up. Like, you can pick up legendary parts, rare parts, co uncommon parts, and common parts. For whatever reason, the game seems to think that giving me legendary parts all the fucking time is the right thing to do. And I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, well, at least it gives you a little bit of cell bait, although you don't get very much in the way of cell bait. Just because of the way that... Just because of the fact that you can only take back, like, 20 parts. And this guy just loves dodging everything. This is why you need to put your head up, folks. I really wish I wasn't a thing. I'm, I'm hitting the thing. I'm very clearly hitting the thing. You can hit these sorts of things with explosions. And they'll still manage to dodge it. Like, missiles will explode next to them. And they'll somehow dodge exploding missiles. It makes no sense. Like, I kind of get the point. That's the brand of machine that's supposed to be, like, high agility. And therefore, it manages to dodge a lot of dangerous attacks. And you do get the same benefit, but yeah, it's it's still a bit weird. I think the game would be better without all of that stuff. And I guess I had a few more problems with this game than I thought I did. It's okay, really, but... Look, seriously, what's up with this dodge? I don't know what it is about my back weapon that actually allows me to hit them, but it's something. There are of course weapons that will increase your hit, but you won't hit with those weapons. Um, you won't you won't do as much damage with those weapons in one go as you will the weapons I've got equipped right now, and it makes no sense. A melee attack. That very clearly hits can be dodged. Like, what the fuck? Also, your lady friend talks too much. I mean... Might as well talk about the quality of the, um, localization as well I'm here. It's not bad. In the grand scheme of things. There's a couple of typos here and there. Like, the major one I can think of is more... Um, not even gr grammatical error. Like, but like, just like a presentation error in general. Where it's clear they've put together two strings, but they haven't taken mind of where those strings are going to be displayed. 
So, yeah, go into an elevator, and when she says nothing of no, the N for nothing is capitalized when it doesn't really need to be. But, yeah, other than that, it's okay. It's not amazing. The writing seems very bare, well, not so much bare bones, but it doesn't really have much in the way of flavor, which is fine, I guess. It's a very generic Japanese translation, if you can kind of understand what I mean by that. And... I mean, some of the writing's okay. Like, you're meant to feel attached to your robot buddy who's trying to help you out by literally going into eating contests as part of her, like, weird development cycle. I don't know exactly what the deal is with her, but, yeah, she's basically just trying to help out, which is, you know, a nice enough thing, I suppose. It's just a little odd. But, yeah, it's not bad. It's not... It's not like, um... What's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't feel out of character, I guess what I'm trying to say. It's not East 8 bad. See, I've got 50 parts, but I'm not going to be able to take half of them back, which is really disappointing. I might as well see if I can... Um... Well, I think the next floor will either be a boss gate or a, um, or an escape gate, and if I can escape, I will, but we've been down here for 20 minutes, and you can see what the gameplay looks like. There are different weapons, of course, and they aren't that different. Like, machine gun is obviously what a machine gun is like. There's mine layers. Oh, yeah, look, it's one of these things. Uh, for whatever reason, they give you these things that are horrendously strong, take next to no damage, and you're meant to try and take them out. For bonus resources, but as you can see, I don't stand a chance trying to take this thing out before it disappears. Yeah, floor defense system. This is another boss fight. I'll heal up just in case. The gameplay itself is not that bad. It's just the whole balancing shit that's going on. Just makes it surprisingly hard for me personally to get into. I mean, if you can deal with that, and you don't mind being quote-unquote challenged a bit, you might have a good time with it. But if you're looking for a dungeon crawler, I'd probably just tell you to go and play Bloody Dragon's Crown again. Oh fuck, oh fuck. Christ, I hate when they pull out the laser beam attacks. See, that's the sort of, that's the sort of challenge I'd expect from a boss fight. But remember... How we came across that guy earlier on, on like level 14 or whatever, that managed to do my head in. Yeah, that kind of happens without- oh god. There we go. Give me all your parts, sir. A chaff too, apparently. That's what I want to keep my eyes open for. If I can get out of here. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, let's lose- uh, use both the small health health kits, although I guess both of the both are one and the same, really. No reason not to go, no reason not to go get some stainless steel. Here's a layout. Escape gate. Thank God, we're getting out of here. Yes, yeah, so we would like to withdraw from the dungeon, please. Alright, so let's have a look at our parts, shall we? As you can see, most of them are... Most of them seem to not be able to actually give us any sort of reasonable stat benefit, but at the very least, they'll be good cell bait. Nothing wrong with being good cell bait. I'm just looking through for new weaponry. God knows I'm gonna need some new weaponry. Oh, those are just common and rares. Okay. Just looking for something that actually ups my... Okay, we'll take that one, we'll take that one. We might as well take that one. And we'll just fill the... We'll just fill the rest in as we feel like to... Get as many money worth parts as possible. 
We got 250,000 from that one, which actually isn't too bad. You can skip these cutscenes by, hold by holding the circle button, I believe. There we go. There's the ticking clock. You can see that I've gone a fair bit further than the other video that I did on this game. Oh, another cutscene. I'm not actually sure what she's referring to when she says her, her, the other aide showed up. Can't actually hear it, so sorry. Okay, apparently we've got another gift coming in, but I'm not sure what that could possibly be. Be nice if you could reopen the... Oh. Right, so they still want me to go and hop into the arena and level up so I can get the rank C. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. I think we're going to... If I were to keep playing, which I don't plan on doing, but I think if I was, if I were to try, I'd probably fail, which... Uh, it's probably not going to be great. Just because of the way the game's difficulty has worked against me, it's kind of robbed me of most of the opportunity I would have to actually pull off the... To actually pull off the sort of victory that I'd be looking for, which kind of sucks. Oh, nothing better than the... Yeah, it's kind of hard to play around with your weapons when all three of your weapons will play around with the entirety of your attack values in turn. It just makes no sense to me. Although that one will increase literally everything that I've got in the way of attack power, which is weird, but okay. <laughs> So there is one other thing you can do in this game, and while I can't directly access the um, while I can't directly access the arena, to do it right now. I can actually do it in the in the mech performance test arena. You can actually fight other mech users in the story. There's no like multiplayer or anything one on one, and I will go ahead and I will fight literally the hardest one there is to fight. I did actually manage to get close to beating this one, but I failed. Oh well, we'll give this another shot anyway. You can see what a one-on-one -on -one fight is like, and there's even some voice clips for the individual pilots, but other than that, it's basically the same game, except that they're a fair bit harder to defeat, so... So yeah, as you can see, just dodge, go fuck yourself. Seriously, like, what is up with dodge? Oh, and I've been paralyzed! Wonderful! Because status effects. You do have other things that haven't gone either, like certain parts will give you certain benefits. It's kind of like Gundam Breaker, where certain parts will have things like attack up, health up, defense up, uh, mind sweeper, uh, faster recharge, and what have you. But, I mean, other than that, this, this is basically it. It's a pretty basic dungeon crawler, which is... Unfortunately let down by its annoying difficulty curve and some weird choices along the lines of its difficulty. Apparently I've got my armor going real well because... I mean, this lady can one-shot you. Like, this, this woman is like the third fight of the game. And she can just wipe the floor with you. And I'm apparently doing alright because I'm managing to, you know, stay ahead of her even with being paralyzed a couple of times. So... You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Although they do have gigantic fuck you attacks like giant lasers as well. So it's not it's not like you can't not be careful in these fights. Because they can and will kick your ass if you let them. 
But yeah, as you can see, like I had like I have like six thousand hit, and she still managed to dodge like every bloody attack. And I don't know why this is a thing in this game, but it is. But yeah, that that's basically the entire game. I don't think it's that bad. It's a nice little dungeon crawler, but it's just the difficulty curve that really gets to me. That's the main problem I have with it. If you think you can deal with just having some random dudes come out of nowhere and one-shot you, you'll probably be fine, but I don't see many people being able to deal with that just because of how annoyingly difficult it makes the game when you just lose a bunch of money for no discernible reason other than fuck you. Also, you don't actually get any um, health kits in this one, so there's no repairing for me. There doesn't seem to be any way to really effectively dodge either, especially with bosses with, like, machine gun attacks, so... Other than using your dodge to stay out of way of slow attacks, there doesn't really seem to be any use for it, which is frustrating. But yeah, this is basically what an arena fight looks like. You're just trying to avoid their attacks and fire off your own, but of course they've got ridiculously long health bars. Which means you have to do it for a really long time, or you're fucked. I don't know what the deal is with the day system, I don't know if they let up on it later on or anything like that, but... Yeah. That's that's half the reason why the difficulty curve is as annoying as it is. So if it turns out that the, the whole counting down from 30 days thing ends up being useless, it would frustrate me even more, but I'm not going to put in the effort to do that because of shit like this. It took me forever to get, get me down to like a quarter of... not so much a quarter of my health, but... It took her forever to take out a quarter of my health, and then she could just pull out shit like that that'll get rid of a quarter of it in one hit. But yeah, there you go. This is available now on the PlayStation Network. I don't know what price it is, because I just redeemed this straight from the review code, and I didn't even go look. I think it's 20 bucks. Bit too much for me, honestly, with the difficulty curve the way it is if they patch it. To make it a little bit easier, then maybe it'll be worth the time, but right now, not really. Wait for it to go on sale if you plan on picking it up. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.